Hi, it's Katrina. As one of the oldest civilizations on Earth, India is home to some of the world's most ancient folklore and mythology. This video was requested by many of you, even via Instagram. There are so many important characters and creatures that I will do my best. From benevolent and glamorous goddesses to multi-headed serpents and evil fish, here are nine of the many creatures and characters from Indian mythology. Number 9. Nandi Nandi is one of the most iconic and well-known characters in Hindu mythology. To understand Nandi, you must first understand Shiva. He is one of the three most important gods in the Hindu trinity and he is known as the Destroyer. Nandi is the Hindu god Shiva's sacred bull calf, gatekeeper, and vehicle or Vahana. He's also the chief of the gods' team of attendants, who are called Ganas, the guardian of all four-legged animals, and the provider of music while Shiva dances the cosmic dance of creation, the Tandava. Nandi is often depicted as a sitting bull with folded limbs. He is either black or white and wears a necklace with a bell. He is also often shown transporting Lord Shiva, which is why he is known as the vehicle or the mount. Other depictions show him as half-human and half-bull. A religious text called the Saura Purana describes Nandi as adorned with all ornaments, glowing like a thousand suns, holding a trident in his hand, three-eyed, adorned with a sliver of the moon, a thunderbolt in his hand, four-armed like a second Sankara. He is adorned in ornate clothing and jewelry with flowers, a crown, and garlands. Nandi is pretty impressive to look at. Vedic texts say that a great sage named Shilada prayed for an immortal child and went through severe penance and received Nandi as his son. By age seven, he was severely devoted to Shiva and well-versed in sacred scriptures and texts. However, he was soon going to die. But Lord Shiva, pleased with his devotion and sacrifice, transformed him into the half-man, half-bull, granting him immortality and guardian of the gate. The worship of Nandi and Shiva can be traced back to the Indus Valley Civilization from 3300 BC to 1300 BC. Nandi's sacred status is one reason why bulls are highly revered in the Hindu world today, especially in the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. Number 8. Lakshmi The Hindu goddess Lakshmi is Vishnu's wife and represents beauty, prosperity, good fortune, and fertility. She has a golden skin tone and wears an elegant red sari with gold thread. Her chosen vehicle is an owl. Common depictions show Lakshmi with four hands and standing on or holding a lotus, which symbolizes spirituality, purity, self-awareness, and fortune. She's often accompanied by two elephants called Gaja Lakshmi, who represent work, strength, and abundant prosperity. Good combo. In some images, Lakshmi holds a money jar and wealth pours from her hand. This has a double meaning of both material and spiritual wealth. Her hands are usually open, signifying compassion and charity. In Hindu tradition, Lakshmi was born from the churning of the first ocean. Hindu wedding rituals and celebrations follow a paradigm set forth by the relationship between Lakshmi and Vishnu. Lakshmi is also an important figure of Jainism and appears in Buddhism in a similar context to how she's depicted in Hindu mythology. Ancient Indian scriptures declare all women to be embodiments of Lakshmi. Number 7. Narasimha to combat evil and religious persecution, the Hindu god Vishnu took the form of Narasimha, a half-man, half-lion creature with a human torso and lower body and a lion's face and claws. Vishnu appeared as Narasimha to kill the cruel and virtually indestructible Asura king Hiranyakashipu. Hiranyakashipu hated Vishnu for killing his demonic brother Hiranyaksha. You guys following? He misused his powers by creating chaos for Vishnu's devotees, including his own son. All he wanted was revenge and to destroy Lord Vishnu, but he was very devoted to Brahma, the lord of creation. Brahma was impressed and offers him anything he wants. Hiranyakashipu asks for a tricky boon of protection, that he would not die either on earth or in space, nor in fire nor in water, neither during the day nor at night, neither inside nor outside of a home, nor by a human, animal, or god, neither by inanimate nor by animate being. Smart, huh? That's the way to do it. He now has no fear of death and unleashes terror. 
To work around Hiranyakashipu's protective powers, Vishnu created the avatar Narasimha, who is neither man nor animal. He appeared at twilight, between daylight and dark, and placed Hiranyakashipu into his lap, which was not on earth or in space. He then clawed him to death with his nails, which were neither animate nor inanimate, thus rendering the boon ineffective. Slightly complicated, but I hope you got it. Narasimha is worshipped by the Vaishnava sect of Hinduism and is honored in many regional Hindu temples and festivals. Number 6. Sharaba Narasimha is extraordinarily powerful and after he killed Hiranyakashipu, he remained outraged. Brahma sent Prahlada, one of Vishnu's biggest devotees, to try calming Narasimha down, but his efforts were in vain. Lacking other options, the frightened Hindu gods went to Shiva for help. Shiva appeared to Narasimha as a gigantic part lion and part bird beast named Sharaba. In the epic Mahabharata, Sharaba is an eight-legged lion-slaying monster who eats raw flesh and roars so loudly he scares all the nearby animals into the hills and forests. He is more powerful than an elephant and can clear an entire valley in one jump. Sharaba's fate varies between legends, many of which highlight the rivalry between Vaishnavas or devotees of Vishnu and Shaivites, who primarily worshipped Shiva. Vaishnavas consider Sharaba to be a name of Vishnu and combat narratives about him destroying Narasimha. In one story, Vishnu defeated Sharaba by assuming the form of a ferocious bird-like animal named Gandabirunda. Sharaba also appears in Buddhism as a previous birth of the Buddha. He's featured in several emblems, including the Indian state of Karnataka's government, Karnataka Soaps and Detergents Limited, and the University of Mysore. Number 5. Aravata Aravata is the king god of elephants and the Vedic god Indra's mount. According to the ancient Hindu text, the Vishnu Purana, he is pure white in color and has four tusks and seven trunks. In other versions, he has ten tusks and five trunks. He stands at the gate to Indra's palace and helps him to battle demonic powers preventing the rain and dew from nourishing the earth. In a Sanskrit text discussing the mythical origins of elephants called the Matangalila, Aravata was born from one of two eggshell halves when the Hindu creator god Brahma sung seven sacred hymns over it. He was made god of all the elephants. His name is derived from the word Iravat, which means one who is produced from water. This is because of a legend that Aravata emerged of churning the ocean of milk. Not enough time to explain all of that here. One legend holds that when Indra defeated the terrifying demon of drought named Vritasura, Aravata reached his trunk into the watery underworld and sprayed water into the clouds, which Indra uses to create rain over the famine-stricken land. Number 4. Sheshnag Also called Shesha, Sheshnag is a large, coiled serpent with up to 1,000 heads and is sometimes shown with a crown on each head. He's a primal being of creation and the protector of the universe in Hindu mythology. Shesha is Vishnu's servant and, in some cases, a manifestation of the god who is often depicted resting atop Shesha. All the planets in the universe rest on Shesha's hoods while he constantly sings of the glories of Vishnu. He appears on Earth as two different human manifestations. Lakshama, the brother of Vishnu's avatar Rama, and Balarama, the brother of Vishnu's avatar Krishna. Shesha was the oldest of many brothers, all of whom were cruel and vindictive. He became disgusted with their behavior and ventured out on his own, taking residence in the air above various places on earth, including the Himalayas, where he spent his time meditating and inflicting severe penances upon himself. Eventually, Shesha's skin, muscles, and flesh dried up from his self-harm and fused with his frame. He asked Brahma for a boon, and Brahma requested that Shesha stabilize the earth from below in return for the favor. Shesha then went to the underworld and supported the planet with his hoods, and according to some legends, he still lives there. Another common belief is that when Shesha coils forward, time moves ahead and creation occurs, and when he recoils, the universe's existence ends. Some stories claim that he will survive the end of the world and will remain eternally in his current form. Number 3. The Rainbow Fish The rainbow fish was so big it was the size of a whale, and according to Hindu mythology, it ate Buddha, who some believe is an incarnation of the god Vishnu. Its scales were red, blue, green, and yellow, representing the classical elements. The red scales represented the element of fire, or Agni. The blue scales were made of ice and symbolized the water element, Jal. The green scales were grass and represented the earth, Prithvi. 
and the yellow scales were lightning and stood for the element of air or vayu. Some fishermen saw Buddha get trapped, and so they caught and killed the rainbow fish to free the Buddha from its stomach. For the next year, the fish's remains fed the entire nation. It's unlikely that the rainbow fish story was inspired by a real-life creature. While there is a species of fish called the rainbow fish, it's a freshwater species that does not live in or near India or the Indian Ocean. Number 2. Brahma Brahma is part of the Trinity and is the creator god in Hinduism. He reigns supreme among the triad of great gods described in the early Hindu epic Mahabharata, which also includes Shiva and Vishnu. Due to his high status, Brahma rarely appears in myths where gods take on human forms. He is depicted in various ways but commonly has four faces, which represent a collection of ancient religious texts called the Vedas, and four hands which represent the cardinal directions. Each hand holds a different object including a rosary, a water pot, a book, and a lotus. Brahma is often shown sitting on a lotus and with a swan as his chosen vehicle. In one legend, Brahma was born out of a golden egg. Another claims that he was born from a lotus that sprouted from Vishnu's navel. There are several temples dedicated to Brahma throughout India, including in Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, and Andhra Pradesh. Number 1. Parvati The Hindu goddess Parvati is Shiva's devoted wife and consort and represents love, family, and fertility. Parvati is fair and beautiful. She often wears a red sari and a headband. In solitary images, she typically has four arms, but when pictured with Shiva, she usually has two. She is sometimes holding objects such as a trident, a mirror, lotus, rosary, bell, dish, or sugarcane stock. Parvati appears in many different capacities varying from one legend to the next and is commonly featured in regional folklore throughout India. As a result, she has over 100 different names and a dynamic personality. While she is considered benevolent, Parvati sometimes appears as angry or ferocious. These more volatile depictions of her character often feature her with eight or ten arms. But in many, if not most cases, Parvati is maternal, gentle, and nurturing and symbolizes the divine energy between spouses. Images often show her playing a game with Shiva or looking on as her husband performs heroic and brave feats. They live together in a mountain kingdom called Kailasa and have two sons, Kumara, the Hindu god of war, and the elephant-headed deity Ganesha. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, let me know if you would like to see a part 2. There are many more characters and stories where that came from. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already for more mythology from around the world. See you soon! Bye!